I knew I'd eaten too many pickles before my nap that day, but I napped anyway. After all, I'm a cat. I can't not nap. Still, I wasn't exactly prepared for what came next. I'm Deb Eche. I'm going to walk you through the making of Madcap Catnap. Try saying that five times fast. Okay, first things first. Where do filmmakers, or for that matter, anyone, come up with a concept for a project? I wonder what it might be like to live in a town that followed the rules of dreams. When I wanted an idea for a Louis film, I revisited the concept, with the addition of a couple of cat-specific scenarios. Being chased by giant shadowy mice, awakened by a cat food can being opened, etc. Enter my usual extremely detailed and neatly organized storyboard, and I was good to go. Here's a tip. I covered my basic drafting table with a roll of self-adhesive magnetic whiteboard, so I can use dry erase markers and attach things with magnet pins. And you can still use it as a drafting table. I'm very partial to Louie. This is the original Louie, a two and a half inch toe to tail needle felted character. I often actually make my characters as real 3D figures, so then I can photograph them from every angle to process into 2D characters. Once graphically processed, at the moment I use GIMP and PNG enhancing software. I decide what angles I need and tweak those. Being so small, Louis's wool texture didn't translate well when enlarged, so I lifted the wool texture from one of my larger models to use, as I really like this look for animals. Louis is purposely rather blocky and not particularly cat-like, so rigging was interesting. I also needed him in different configurations and from a lot of different angles, so there were several Louis, mostly freebone, a couple more traditionally rigged. His face is really important. It needs to be very expressive. I prefer morph heads in Cartoon Animator, for various reasons, one being that the eyeballs actually sit in the eye sockets, giving it an effect I like. Morph heads can be tricky at first, though, taking a lot of careful tweaking back and forth between preview and adjustments, but it's definitely worth the time. I really wanted a surreal, bizarre, dreamlike look to the backgrounds. I often get my inspiration from paintings and went with post-impressionist works by artists like Van Gogh, Cezanne, Pizarro, etc. this time, adding a graphic look to them. Combining these with the flat, color-filled landscape elements that have been given a sort of a newsprint look 
throws the world off kilter as the two looks are so different, but I think they actually combine quite well. Adding motion effects to these in post hopefully makes the world a bit more bizarre. The new features were wonderful to use in a couple of areas in this film. Spring bones are really an amazing breakthrough. Before, I would rig tails as a spine and either add keyframes manually or with one of the pre-made spine animations. This worked, but it still didn't really get across the sinuous quality of a cat's tail. By rigging the tail with spring bones, a lovely smooth movement was achieved. banner was also rigged with spring bones. But I think the most fun application of this new feature was in the final chase scenes through the dream tunnel. I rigged the entire front and rear figures of Louie with spring bones to give that comical frantic walk run that cats often do. It gave a great cartoony feel and I could still add facial animations easily. The FFD editor was also extremely useful. After capturing images of the underwear from various angles in Blender, it was a purchased pre-made model, I was able to make the crop dance in the wind by applying FFD to each pair of shorts. Layering and moving the camera along the Z-axis, as in Louis' run in the landscape in search of a bathroom, remains one of my favorite original abilities in Cartoon Animator. For that scene, I simply animated the back of Louis running separately and layered it with the rendered scene of the road, so it appears we're seeing it from Louis's point of view. The monster mice were G3 characters that I had made before, rescaled to be tall and thin, desaturated, and the brightness down to nil. They make pretty good specters. I added a pre-made action template from Reillusion and slowed it down as much as possible for effect. I use what works for what I want to achieve, and Cartoon Animator 5 is at the forefront in this project, but I also have a battery of tools to play with that mesh really well with Cartoon Animator. Blender is one of those. Creating characters and props in Blender allows you to save images at any angle for importation into CTA 5 for rigging, but it also allows for the saving of moving and rotating props to use in CTA 5. Much more on this later. A typical workflow for this project was this, but there were other configurations as well. I do want to mention pop video at this point, as it is extremely useful to add image sequences with transparent backgrounds to Cartoon Animator 5, which is essential to the interface with Blender. You can also save really complex background scenes with lots of animation as pop videos directly out of CTA 5, then reload to a new project and add your foreground animation over top. This prevents all of that background motion from bogging down the project. And now for the part of this film that took up a lot of my time. And that was all for a minor character, the cat in the box. How to bring this idea to life? I created the head in Blender and made it look vaguely like Louie, like some of the other minor characters. I saved this in two ways. First, just as a still image, but then also turning its head as an image sequence which was processed in pop video. A different version with a hat was also created. I also made the spring in Blender, but likely a regular image would work. Now, attaching these two, rigging and animating in Blender, would work, but I thought it would work better in Cartoon Animator. So off I went. My first thought was to use spring bones, which would have been great. But attaching the head to the spring just wouldn't work due to the loose nature of the spring animation. Also, attaching the head to the spring ahead of time, then rigging with spring bones caused deformation of the head along with the spring. So, I rigged the spring normally, making sure the anchor was on the bottom, and linked the head to the top bone afterwards. Using compression of the bones, making sure stretch is selected, I was able to achieve what I wanted. Easily add the box by duplicating the image and cutting out the front. Create the turning wind-up key in Blender. I'll cover this later. Assemble in CTA 5 and render as high-quality pop video several times, starting at different frames and adding a different box. 
Therefore, when you use these pop videos, re-entering them into CTA5, you've got a crowd because they all start at different points. They're not all working in unison. Phew, that was a work. I am by no means proficient in this 3D software, but I am learning as I go. It's free and extremely powerful. I know it can be daunting, but it wasn't that hard to get the basics and learn a few techniques for this project, accessing the amazing array of tutorials for just about anything you want. There are lots of free and low-cost models, or build your own, even from the start if you don't mind using just geometric figures like Cube Louie or the Cat in the Box. You can also take bits from one model and add to another, like the fish house on wheels. Free or purchased textures, like the rusty metal on the tractor, can expand your repertoire. Inputting models, free or purchased, to render from different angles gives you a wide variety of props to rig or not to rig in CTA5. By animating the rotation of a model, rendering the image sequences and inputting into CTA5 via pop video, you can get moving props that turn. Now for a big thing that I found Blender really useful for when it comes to CTA5, rotating props. In this film, I used a propeller and a wind-up key, but there are lots of uses such as, you know, rotating wheels, dials, fans, etc. from different angles. As before, save as an image sequence and input to CTA5 via pop video. These can be reused in a variety of ways, linked to characters or various objects. Another CTA5 Blender application for this film was actually done in reverse. For the cat food can, I animated the cat on the label in CTA5 with the label as a prop right behind it, rendering it as an image sequence. This can then be imported into Blender with the add-on Images as Planes included but must be activated, making sure to check the command import as animation. You can then apply this plane as a decal to an object with the shrink wrap modifier, but keep in mind that this takes a bit of time and tweaking to get it right. I then keyframed the camera position and rendered out for import back to CTA5 via pop video. I think there could be a lot of use for this technique. The dream tunnel at the end is an effect made entirely in Blender following a tutorial. It was quite involved, but if you can follow instructions and find well-presented tutorials, it's well worth the effort and you can get a customized result. Load it as a video in CTA and voila! I think there's a lot of scope for expanding the play between Blender and Cartoon Animator 5, something I intend to explore further. When it comes to a video editor, I always look for versatility and available plugins. I've used HitFilm Express with all the add-ons for a long time, but their model changed when the company was taken over by Artlist. Although my copy of Express will keep working as long as I have it, it's no longer supported. In searching for a viable alternative, I came across Vegas Pro, among others, but it seems to be a very good fit. I'm just learning the ins and outs of Vegas Pro, but have found it to be not terribly daunting. I particularly like the fact that it's an excellent host for some of my favorite third-party effects plugins by New Blue and Akvis. Regardless, Vegas Pro has a lot of native plugins of its own. To test its usefulness, I created the entire title sequence for the film with it, applied effects to sets and props and characters for texture and effects, as well as general effects in post-production, and tested it for some of my favorite layouts from HitFilm. It performed remarkably well, and I look forward to developing my skills in the software. Here's a side note. Vegas Pro reportedly has good audio editing capabilities, which I've not yet explored. To test it against HitFilm, I created an easy blur effect to show movement without using motion blur, which could become very resource hungry. It entails duplicating the video of the running Louie, applying angle blur with long vectors to the bottom figure. Stretch it out, angle correctly and position it against the original, playing with opacity. It works well in both pieces of software and is a very useful, easy, smooth effect to use. Finding or writing the right music is always a major part of filmmaking. For this one, because of the subject matter, I really wanted something along the lines of Steppenwolf's magic carpet ride, but obviously couldn't use it. I went on Pixabay, one of my favorite resources for images, effects, and videos, 
and discovering they also have music found something that fit the bill. They also have sound effects. With the free download, you also get the license for use. Finally, putting everything together, tweaking the edit, and major revisions were next, leading to Madcap Catnap.